I've just managed to score a little pile of manure for myself. A lady came across to the allotment there and said in the next field, someone's had a horse out. So it's not a lot, but I'll pop it on the compost and that'll be probably next year's veg. I'll just show you what I've been finding out this spring while I'm shooting this it's at the end of March and I wanted to show you some of the plants that are coming up already I'm fairly new to this grown vegetable um, thing as you know this is my third year and I, obviously I'm learning lots all the time what I've discovered is things some of the things that I put in last year last autumn um, and that didn't come to anything or not even last autumn at the back of the summer that didn't come to anything and I just for whatever reason just left them in now in early spring they're shooting away so I'll just show you this so there you are we have some lovely little bunches of rocket coming away really quite nicely it's I think it's the 24th of March today now I put them in back end of last year as I say and I just for whatever reason I never dug them out and they are going to be edible fairly soon. I'll show you something else as well. So, I know I've showed you these before. This is the chard that I put in at the end of last season. This is a biennial, so you're going to expect it to come up. Point being, if you get it in at the back end of the year and you don't necessarily get anything off it that year, it's going to start coming up really early in the spring. Also in this border is chives. They have really sprung away in the last couple of weeks. And up at the back end there. Look at that, sorrel. Beautiful. These are both perennial vegetables or leaves or whatever you want to call them. Um, so they're obviously going to start much earlier in the year because they're already established in the ground. And this last one I'm showing you is cress. It's like a land cress. You can use it as an alternative to water cress. Again, put in last year. I don't know whether this one is perennial or annual or biannual or what. Uh, but anyway, it's grown. And finally here, this kale, which has been in all last year and it's still going strong. It is starting to go to seed now. The Cavalo Nero seems to be more keen to get the seed, but it is all gone. However, look at that. Still lots on there. Lovely. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is within a week or two, or even sooner, I could be picking a salad out of my garden at the end of March, before the end of March, which to me is incredible. Um, it's really something I've learned that if I can put things in at the back end of the year before they're going to spring up much quicker. I mean I already know this a lot of this stuff from Garden with Flowers for many years but um, you're much more focused when it's food uh, and you're looking at the stuff coming up in your garden and thinking hey that rocket I could be eating that soon or the sorrel I could have a little kale sorrel chive and rocket salad within a week amazing so I think probably if I can remember that's always the the clincher with me I forget all this stuff if I can remember come at the end of the season next year if I planted a, a nice border or a section of a border with maybe this one I've got the chives in here I've got sorrel up there if I could put some um, rocket in and I know it works with spring onions because I did that the year before and put all of this stuff in here and probably spinach as well I think that would work and I would be able to have salads from really early in the season I had always previously thought that I would need to have um, like covers, little galoshes or galoshes, what they're called, galoshes 
uh, the hoops with the plastic over to overwinter me. Galoshes or wellies or something, aren't they? I always get things wrong. Uh, you know, with the plastic covering, with the hoops to um, overwinter, things like that. But you know, this winter wasn't an easy winter. It was, um, we had a lot of sub-zero temperatures. Uh, we had snow for quite a period of time. We're in the northeast of England. So although we are on the coast, it keeps it a bit milder. It's not a warm place. Um, so yeah, I think you can, you can do that without, without a plastic covering and that's a revelation to me. It's actually a beautiful day here at the allotment today. Unfortunately, the wind has gotten up again, so it might be a bit noisy on the camera, we'll see. But today, I'm putting in my main crop potatoes. Can't look at the camera because the sun's in my eyes. Uh, I've got some pink fair apple and some Mayan gold. It's my main crop potato. And I'll show you where I'm going to plant them. It's a bit more interesting than usual, this, I hope, anyway. These are my potatoes. This one here is the Mayan gold, and this one here is the pink fir apple. They're pretty similar in terms of shape and size. <clears throat> I've never eaten either of them before, but I always like to give things a try. I've also got these Charlotte potatoes, which I kind of forgot about, as you can see. Absolutely massive root, uh, shoots on them. I don't know whether I put those in. I don't even know how I would go about putting something in with a shoot that long. Um, we'll see how we get along and if I've got any room, I might find some way for them. So this is the border behind me that I'm going to be putting the potatoes into. As you can see, there's already something in there. I've talked about this before. It's my border where I've got my broad beans. And uh, we've heard, and I hope it's true, otherwise I'm going to be in trouble, that we can plant the potatoes in between the rows of the broad beans, uh, thereby getting double use out of my border. So I'm going to do that now. The problem that I foresee is that some of these broad beans are getting quite big and um, I'm a bit worried about digging in between of them. But I'm just going to dig a little hole for each potato rather than a trench and um, hopefully that'll work. So I'm aiming to put these about five inches deep, about 15 inches apart, and about two foot between each row. I found this lying along the end here. Brand new bag of compost up. Must have been lying there for a while to get all these roots in it like that. So that's my seed potatoes in with the broad beans. Time will tell whether that works or not. Apparently they don't compete with each other for nutrition. And by the time you come to harvest your potatoes, your beans are finished. So I'm pretty keen to see how that works. It, it's a, it'll be a really good bonus for me to be able to use two borders like that. Um, only issue I've got is I've never grown either pink fir apples or my golds before so I don't really know what um, how much of a crop to expect um, and whether if it's a smaller crop that's because of competition with the broad beans 
Anyway, we'll see. That's a long way ahead. As you see, Kenny's just found this big bag of compost. There's like a dumping ground at the end of the allotments there where, I don't know who it is, but the dump rubbish. Anyway, he's just found this great big bag of compost. It just had a couple of weeds that had uh, roots that had wound their way in and we've taken them out. As we're here and I've got these kind of triffid charlotte potatoes here that I don't know what to do with. Let's get a close up. And I've uh, got these two buckets as well, these two po plant pots here. We just thought, well, we'll sling them in with the, with the compost because it's a freebie and then um, see what happens with that. And then uh, I don't know whether you would use pot and compost to, to plant potatoes in pots or whether you would want some special mix. However, that's what we're going to do. We're going to give it a try. I think I'll put two potatoes in each container. And I, I don't know how deep to put them. I don't know what to do about those big shoots. I maybe have them sticking out the top. Although then there's the frost to worry about, isn't there? Anyway, we'll figure it out. So I've just tried to pick a couple of the potatoes with the shorter uh, shoots. That massive long one, I think I might put sideways. The dilemma is if it shoots up above the ground too soon and we'll get a frost, it'll, it'll uh, finish it off. So I'll just try and I'm just going to put them in. nothing to lose it's free compost it's uh, extra potatoes that I wasn't intending on planting really so might as well give it a try nothing ventured So there we go, the potatoes are in, that's quite exciting, um, a little landmark um, in the allotment to get them in and a uh, free bag of compost and we've got some little bits and bobs of salad starting to grow. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching that today and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.